Thank you very much for being here. I'm Nicolas, as you were saying. I'm from Chile. I'm based in London. I used to be an architect, and then I transformed myself in a service designer, kind of strategic design. And I'm starting my academic career, if you can say. I'm teaching at the Royal College of Art and also at University College London now. I help in entrepreneurs prototype the startups. And uh, my talk today, oh, sorry. And thank you very much for being here and try to share uh, the experience of, uh, of a South American country in this uh, very exciting European context. So thank you very much for the invitation. My talk today is going to be, first I decided to explain in a way what were the motivations and the whys we decided to do an innovation lab in, in our government. Then I'm going to explain very briefly what's the strategy we took and at the end very briefly uh, what are we doing right now. So uh, what is our innovation uh, imperative? Why we, why we need to innovate in the Chilean public sector? First of all, a little bit of context. We had had, uh, since we kicked the dictator, our own Cold War dictator in 1990, uh, of 25 years of democracy, we have a very long uh, way from being a country who has uh, 40% of poverty and now around 14, a country that ha used to have uh, $4,000 per capita uh, GDP and now uh, 21. And, uh, and different kind of like stages of what we call modernization, building institutions, developing new services, making certain like uh, the uh, polit political economical reforms on health, on education, on, on different kind of areas. So we had had these 25 years of, of, of building or putting together our country. Um, and that has uh, led us different kind of like different institutions around innovation. Six innovation units and ministries, in public services, innovation committees, innovation prices, and a lot of set of like different kind of like institutions in silos or inside public sector. Even then, our question was in 2000 when we when we were, uh, we would just arrive in government 2014. Why we still need to innovate in this Chilean public sector? And our understanding is because what we have done in the last 25 years is not exactly innovation. It's around modernization that in our understanding is to put, make available to the majority what is available in the state of the art. Basically building houses, building schools, building health systems and putting together different kind of like large technical service systems on the country. But now we think in the moment in which we are, we think we need to move beyond that and we need to innovate in how to govern a radical new context that is for us and also for the world. And then in, that, in this point, I think we connect a lot of what's going on in this discussion and in the discussion around the world around public sector innovation. So what is this kind of new context? After the 2008, that was the huge crisis for you, but for us, our understanding is, was the beginning of a series of cycle of economical crisis. Now in Latin America, the thing is going to, the horizon doesn't look good, and it's probably that in the next few years, this crisis is going to be in loops. So this, uh, for us, it's an imperative that to do more with less. So we would need to provide public services, but probably with less money, with less the boom of the Cooper that we used to have in the, five, in the past 10, 10 years. Today, it's a huge political and trust crisis of institutions. In Chile, I've mentioned this to some of the people, we are, we are, we're living a huge political crisis. Our Congress has 5% of approval, five, so it's even kind of the error margin. Uh, political parties are around 15, 12. Government is around 30. So there's a huge kind of like a political crisis of legit legitimacy. We're in the process even of starting a new constitution and, and so forth. And this, the imperative is that we have to respond to the increases demands of citizens that are no longer trusting the way we were used to do politics. That's an image, well, it doesn't look very good, but it's a huge demonstration. I, perhaps you know what we have from 2011 on around education. And at the same time, to put another ingredient to this soup, uh, these wicked contemporary problems that we have. We, have, we are a country of disasters. We had had in the last three years two earthquakes, uh, where one 8.8 .8 and this year 8.2. So you can imagine 
what kind of problems that means. We have pollution, transport, health systems for a more demanding uh, society. So this like obliged us to need to manage complex problems and these new kind of service systems for the new kind of like uh, period in which we are living. So this kind of like huge challenges for us um, became a political commitment for our president. In the, her first presidential address, we managed uh, to, to put their agenda, uh, to put this lab agenda inside, and she said that we need to foster an innovative state going beyond modernization, bringing together the major talents of public and private sector, basically to develop new services for citizens for these new complex challenges. So I think the, the, the presidential mandate was really, really clear. Um, so what we did is, uh, or what the president did, uh, develop an institutional framework, basically putting together five uh, different ministries. So it's an innovation committee that sits inside uh, central government, uh, like dependent of the economic, uh, the economic development agency, uh, with a mandate that is to create a new relationship between government and society through better and people-centered public services, with a focus basically on what, how we can deliver better services for citizens with a set of imperatives. First, to understand and manage complexity, to put the citizen at the center, to focus on implementation, and to consider knowledge as the basic asset that we have to develop through the whole public sector system. With a common understanding of innovation, and here we took the, the work of Nesta for us was re, has been really useful, to understand that public sector innovation, or, or our goal, what we have to produce basically, is new ideas that can work creating public value, that can be new, that can be implemented, and that can be useful for citizens. And with a common understanding of this usefulness, meaning public value, meaning something that might be valuable for citizens, but also valuable for the public good. So this kind of two dimensions, what is good for the general thing, and what is good, what is perceived as good by a citizen. And of course, learning from a global ecosystem. Uh, and I think we, we were lucky of starting our, our own institution in 2014 after the first wave of these labs around the world. So that has been really useful for us to learn how these institutions are made. So why, why, why this, took, this effort took a, a form of a lab in Chile? Because, well, the need of articulation, I think Sabine was really clear to talk about this, and, on also, and also Mind Lab, articulate policymakers and citizens, this articulation between the ideas, what, 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 what we think sh things should do, and how those things actually are, so this articulation with ideas and practice, and the articulation between policy and services, what we think, this, how you develop policies, meaning my understanding of policies that frameworks for the actions of others. So you develop this kind of like regulations for others to do stuff, and how we can, that related to actually public services that can deliver value to citizens. So the lab first for us is a space of articulation of these two dimensions. It's a space for collaboration involving citizens, bringing together multiple stakeholders, and with multidisciplinary approaches. And uh, the title of my talk, creating from, with, and for different kind of people. And people meaning not just citizens, but civil servants, politicians, uh, private sector, and et cetera. And also a space for experimentation. So it's a risk-free zone to catalyze new ideas. I took this from MindLab approach. Complex problems uh, require a systematic approach, so you, we will need a space to experiment systematically about what we are going to do. A space totally outside the political contingency, so we can don't become a factory of political costs, if, because experimentation is a lot about failure. Um, and an approach focused on problems and not in immediate solutions. So how are we doing this? First, we started thinking on three main components, so a strategy it has to do with understanding complex services, co-creating with people, and investment, investing resources. So we have a, an investment side as well. With a combined strategy, designing innovation projects, creating capabilities for, and articulating people, and investing resources on creating an ecosystem around this public innovation uh, lab. With, again, three streams of action, the innovation projects, the innovation capabilities, and the ecosystems and investment. With a team of 17 people, and a budget of around 4 million uh, euros a year for four years. This budget is perhaps it's interesting to say that, just for 
in the in the aim of, of, of collaboration. I think the innovation project is the is the less budget and the bigger team. Uh, I think it's around 20% of the budget. 50% of the budget is investment, and the rest is on capability building. So it's a very kind of indirect proportion between the amount of budget and the amount of team we have. Uh, the learning process has been that we started in October when we were hired as, kind of as, as advisors. The president uh, mentioned this on May. In October we were hired, and it has been almost a year now of working on this. And we decided to, to make the lab as well as an innovation project. So we've been prototyping what the lab may, may, may look like. What we did is that we started with one project on December, and uh, around April we made an open call where we received um, 4,000 applications for the team. That was a huge success for us. Uh, of that application that we opened, uh, more or less 50% with civil servants and 50% from public sector. From the 17, we hired seven designers, and that was very good for, for us, meaning that for the first time we were, we were really serious about hiring designers in the Chilean government. So from that point on, we've been in a, in a journey of, of creating capabilities for the team, and now uh, they are up and running uh, kind of in a, in a proper regime from around August. That was the month I left Chile, I came back to, to London. So just to give a brief of what are we doing now, in innovation projects, we did this demo project that was around health, and we're doing five more projects during, the, during two, 2016. I'm going to explain today in the workshop how we, how we select those. So we're going to talk about framing public problems to, to actually becoming a, pro, a project of the lab. Uh, using this kind of innovation process, in which that is kind of an adaptation of, of, of service design process and public innovation process, that we, we take a challenge, we reframe it through a different kind of like methods, we experiment around them, and we produce two kinds of outcomes, a prototype, and we inform policy. That is basically what we're doing in the innovation project side. Uh, working with citizens, so we've been a huge process now. Uh, this is very really interesting because we started with co-creation workshops in, 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 in a municipality particularly. We're working in a health project around primary care, the accessibility of primary care, working in a municipality in Santiago. Um, and that now we have one workshop a week. So the, it's kind of like very similar of the 27th region. So now our team is kind of in residence on the municipality. But at the same time, we have this kind of like other approach that we're working with politicians. Those in the picture, here's Juan Felipe, he's the head of the lab. And uh, we have the endorsement, this is the, the, the health minister. So we have the endorsements of, of the politicians, working with them as, a par as partners and working with the citizens on the ground. So we've been all the time <coughs> looking at this idea of what is valuable for people, but also what is valuable for the entire system. So we're working. We consider politicians as well as users. And as I was saying, we are redesigning the access to primary health services in, in deprived communities. In the innovation capabilities areas, we, we've been developing a series of workshops with civil servants that, that was really connected to the process of selecting these five new projects. So that has been really useful for us to have the civil servants as partners of us. So we develop a, a lot of workshops with them, basically develop like the small capabilities for understanding what we are doing. The Design Council calls this uh, uh, customer readiness, building kind of customer readiness for us, so we can be understood what our value proposition. We have um, a, an, an innovation fund for, for putting radical teams in different uh, uh, departments of the government, and we are working with the OECD and, and with Nesta in developing a baseline of innovation capabilities on, on Chile, so we can start in 2016 a proper um, program with the civil service. This HIP thing, that is a, a management of innovation, uh, of public innovation, these uh, radical teams, we've been working with f uh, 15 regional projects and 24 kind of city projects, ranging from uh, prisons, um, health, uh, municipalities, and et cetera. And finally, just to finish, in the investment and ecosystem part, we started uh, with our first challenge prize and a national network of universities. Uh, our first challenge prize that emerged from the, our health project, we made an open call, like with the same challenge we have in the, the innovation team, basically how we can improve prime, the access of primary care and community-based health, health services. And we received 2,200 applications. 20 of them went to a demo day. 12 of them we're going to uh, fund 
those with uh, 5,000 uh, pounds around for making a product every one month and four with 50,000 pounds basically to develop their solutions and try to, 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 to match that with actual uh, a network of, of, of family health services. With a range of, uh, of, of partners, uh, this is the ecosystem area, so we need to put here a private sector as well. And uh, this, this was the demo day that the, the slide I put it yesterday. This happened two days ago. Uh, basically, the different uh, um, ideas pitched themselves, and we have in the board this kind of like buyers, if you would say. She is the head of the national health pension system, so she was in the in, in the in the jury trying to see if she can purchase something of this. Uh, of these guys who's applying. And finally, uh, this Aulab, this is a network of universities. What we, did, what we need to do is that basically we decided to have like a, an army of cheerleaders of the lab, and we decided that the best thing to do that was with universities, and that at the same time was the, 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 the best way of connecting this very long country we have, so we have a lot of regions. So what we did is that we developed this network of universities around the topic of natural disasters that are happening in the north, in the south, and in the center. Uh, so we have a very similar uh, approach on uh, that impacta, but for universities, and we have uh, the direct involvement of the Ministry of Interior. He's the Ministry of Interior who is in charge of, of, of disasters. So he's totally on board trying to give like seriousness of what we are trying to do. So that's it. I think I'm in time. So thank you very much. Any questions on the workshop? <laughs>